Oh, people are like crowding in as soon as it starts. That's interesting. Okay. All right. I'm gonna let people crowd in for a second because I noticed that people are now crowding in. I'm just gonna give it a second. <sighs> Ladies, gentlemen, ladies, gentlemen, are we ready to learn how to pick up at an anime convention? We love to see you. Thank you. Very excited to have you all here. Very excited to see you all ready to learn a lesson. And that's all I care about. So, if you have any questions during the panel, at all, anytime, please shout them out. Raise your hand. Do anything. Get my attention somehow. I will answer it because I am able to continually, cohesively do it as it goes on. I'm, I'm able to do it. I'm pretty good at doing most things. Now, thank you all for waiting. Let's get things a little bit started. What is a baddie? Let's think about that. What is a baddie? Drone rope? That's a baddie for sure. Let's see. That old man from Pixar? Baddie? Bing bong? That's a baddie. She gives cunts. Makes her a baddie. So, literally anyone. That is what I made this panel for. This is for women too, by the way. A lot of you women out here. I know, don't know how to talk to that pretty guy you see across the street. A lot, of you a lot of you guys out here see a girl and think to yourself, oh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Shouldn't do that. I'm here to get that out of you. It is an aura, it's an energy. You gotta feel it in your body. That's right, that bell fell off. That was not staged or planned. I didn't know I knew what was gonna happen. I just let that happen. Now then, it's an aura about yourself, how you present yourself. That's what makes you a baddie, the elegance of how you walk, how you feel when you get up, how you use your body, that's what makes you a bad. Now, let's get on to how to do this. How to get somebody with the aura, the finesse, the feeling, the power, the energy of a baddie. How do you do that? Well, let's talk about why I made this panel in the first place. Why, not, why do I get to make this panel? Why do I, with my 5'5", five, five, weird, bisexual guy, gets to make this panel? Why do I get to do that? Why do I get to do that? <laughs> I've heard statements such as, well, all my exes are crazy, you know what I'm saying? And I've also heard that, well, all the guys I date are narcissists, and I, I keep attracting narcissists and I'm such an empath. <laughs> Interesting statements. The only constant in both of those statements is you, period. This is gonna offend a lot of people, but if you keep attracting crazy women or narcissistic men, what is the constant? This is math for you. It's you. So you should probably deal with that. Men can be baddies too. That's right. I see some light skins in here. <laughs> and they know they're baddies if they're light skins. They know what they are. They know, they know those perfect form cells. They know what they are. They know what they are. The dark, dark black man, the baby is a baddie. I don't know, the, ba the baby, despite him being misogynistic and stuff, he's a little bit of a baddie. Chris Brown is misogynistic and a baddie. He's, I, I hate Chris Brown deeply. I hate him with my whole soul. I think he's a horrible person that doesn't deserve a platform, but he acts like a light skin. I'm not gonna lie to anybody. That's just how I feel. That's just his personal opinion. Unrelated to the panel though. Now then, I am teaching people to be more centered as people. I need you to look at yourself and be introspective throughout this entire panel. Because I'm gonna ask you a lot of questions. And if you're willing to answer those questions, honestly, I am here for that and here for you. Now, let's talk about complimenting styles. If you are an anime fan, what do you think you wanna date? Wrong. I know it sounds crazy to not to what, like, you, like think about this for a second, right? Let's say if you're a World of Warcraft player, do you want somebody that plays nothing but World of Warcraft like you, or somebody that'll make you improve? Because if I like Naruto, and another girl I, the girl I'm dating likes Dragon Ball Z, we're both anime fans, but we may come butt heads. You do not want to date the same person as you. Of course you want to date an anime fan, obviously, but you don't want to date the same exact anime fan as you. You want to show them new things. You want to evolve with that person. You want to date somebody in a sense that will make you slightly uncomfortable, or go for somebody that will make you slightly uncomfortable. You wanna be uncomfortable. That's the biggest goal in life. Because when you're uncomfortable, you have to force yourself to be comfortable to grow. That's it. That's the only way you grow. If you're comfortable your entire life, you will have learned nothing, and good day to you, you've wasted it. If you're uncomfortable at work, what do you do? You get a better chair. 
You get a pillow. If you're uncomfortable because you're dehydrated, you get water. You make yourself comfortable. You need to find a complimenting style, not just with people, but with how you operate as humans. That is it. That's all I want. A lot of people are socially inept. That's good. That's great. Good. That's fair. I'm not going to teach you how to truly be unsocially inept. I'm going to teach you cheat codes to be social. I, there's no universe in which a two-hour panel is going to weed out your anxiety. That's not happening. There's no universe in which that happens. There's no universe in which I'm going to get rid of bipolar or get rid of a neurodivergent something that's going on in your brain. That's not happening. That's not happening in this universe. Because the world at large doesn't care. The reason I made this is because the world at large doesn't care about me at all. Because I'm ugly. Too bad. 275 people on Twitter have told me that. Boom. That's right. Now, do I think I'm ugly? No. Do you do those people that on Twitter think I'm ugly? Of course. And that's the reason I made this panel, because if I'm ugly and I'm married, that means everybody has a shot, right? Now then, a few people may be slightly offended at certain things in here. I try to make this all inclusive for most people in here, but I do make missteps. If at any point, this, this microphone is making me, making me get a little bit crazy. If, <laughs> If at any point you are offended, please tell me. I will deal with it after the panel. Now then, <laughs> let's start the actual panel because that was just a precursor. Who's ready? <laughs> we love to see it. Oh. <laughs> Back, you coward. There we go. You are talking wrong. <laughs> How are you talking wrong? Notice the entire time I've been up here, the entire time I've been presenting, I have not used a few stinger words that most people use. Even when I stop, I haven't even used those words. Those words are like, mm, uh, um. A lot of people use those words. I am not American. However, those words are in my language as well. As a matter of fact, Chinese, Japanese, German, every language has a mm, uh, um. It ruins your presence when you say that. And yes, ma'am. Where are you from? Egypt. My name is actually Stetos. It means worthless. My dad hates me. Don't feel bad for me. I don't deserve it. Now then, you get a first impression one time. That is it. You get one shot to make your mark on something, on anything. One shot. When people get that first initial impression, that is their opinion of you. And that sucks, because if you fumble over your words or anything of that variety, they're going to look at you and think, well, they don't have as much authority as they think they do. For instance, if you are late for a meeting or an interview, what do you say? Correct. Thank you for waiting. Most people say, sorry I'm late. Don't apologize. That is an aspect of pity. No one should ever pity me. No one should pity you. You are not victims. Allow yourself to break free from the chokeholds of pity. If you mess up, say thank you for being patient. Thank you for listening. Thank the person. Let them know their presence is warranted. Allowing others to be in the presence of you is good. Allowing others to be around you is good. Allowing yourself to be happy for others being around you is good. Be happy for that. Don't apologize that they're there. I'm sorry I'm wasting your time. You're not wasting any of the time. The person chose to be there. That is an aspect that you must break away from. So, here goes a fun cheat code for silence. This is very fun. You ready for a cheat code? Help these socially inept people. You ready? Are you looking at what? What's wrong? Exactly. Notice how I just stared at him for no reason. That's a cheat code for silence. If you, this, don't do this to random people on the street. Do this when you've actually engaged in conversation, by the way. Don't just walk up to people like, hey, what's up? What's good? Hey. <laughs> don't do that. That's just psychotic. That's, you're a psychopath if you do that. Please don't do that. What I'm saying is, if you are in a situation where silence happens, make eye contact. A psychological trick is the person that is most uncomfortable will make the move first. If you do that, you will now have the upper hand in conversation. This is a slight manipulation tactic. 
And the reason I'm telling you this is because narcissists will do this. You need to avoid this at all costs. I am giving you an insight on how people can trick you. It's like when you look at somebody and get scared and think there's sexual tension. There is not. That is fear. It's a big difference. I'm serious. That's, that's a cheat code. It's a psychology trick. Don't do that. Now then, you got to look at yourself first. Because a lot of you guys came in here thinking to yourself, well, you know what I'm saying? I got a job. I got a car. Congratulations. You've reached the bare minimum. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm nice. Congratulations. You've reached the bare minimum. You must look at yourself first. And I don't mean to say to yourself, well, I'm ugly, so I can't get this person. I mean, look at yourself and think to yourself, what about you makes yourself worth it? What is you about you? What me is about me? It's not the fact that I'm black. It's not the fact that I'm chaotic. That's not me. It's the fact that I'm the only me you're ever going to meet. And that's enough inspiration for me to exist. That's all I want. Now then. In terms of looking at yourself, you gotta be realistic. A lot of people I know can't touch their toes. Why can't you do this? Notice how I'm not bending my knees, but I can touch my toes. Let me get up a little bit right quick, boom. You don't stretch every morning. You don't do that, why is that? My body and back hurt at 27, why? Are you drinking? How are you 27 years old and can't do that? What's wrong with you, can you do this? Why can't you do that? Can you break down? Can you get up? You can't do that, can you? That isn't because I'm extra flexible. That's because I stretch every morning lightly, very lightly. Now then, how to become a better you? Now then, let's get the audience involved. What sucks about you? What sucks about you? Stubborn. Huh? Your ADHD, like that. That's not a bad aspect. That's just a mental thing going on. That's not really bad. You. You're mean. All right, you. We love to hear it. You. I count myself out before other people. You count yourself out before other people? Beautiful. What's up? You. I play way too much. Wonderful. You. Arrogant. We love to see it. Amazing. You in the back over there. Oh my God, that's lovely. You. You're impulsive. That's amazing. You. <laughs> I, like the, I like the secondary confirmation of that. You, go ahead. We love to hear it. You. You're addicted? You said, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a challenger, Poppy, so I understand. So, <laughs> now. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Anyone? Raise your hand. You. Stop thinking with my dick. Damn. Okay. That's fair. Stop thinking with it. That's fair. I like that. Anybody else? That's, that's valid. That's, a lot of people can't be here because of that. That's fair. That's, that's, that's real. Anybody else? You. Just a little bit taller? You. Any, you. A baby. Amazing. Anybody else? You. Huh? Dancing better, you want to learn how to get down? You'll get it one day, you! Consistency, good, that's perfect, I love that, thank you all for that. If I could change one thing about myself, I want wings. I want horns, I want the ability to levitate. You guys chose very boring things, very boring things. I said anything, I didn't say a physical trait, I didn't say something mental, I said you could change anything about yourself. Because I, I ask you this, and I say this with, with, a, with a heavy heart. When someone ever asks you that question, they're not saying, what do you want to change about yourself? They're seeing something in you that they think needs changing. Nothing about you needs to change. Physically, at the very least. That's per you're perfectly fine where you're at. You're great. Whether you think you're too fat, too skinny, need a BBL, you're perfectly fine. You don't need to do, you do not need to do that. At all. You don't. There are other things you need to change, though. We're going to talk about that. Now then, a lot of people have a polyamorous mindset without emotional maturity. <laughs> so, 
What does that mean, a polyamorous mindset? Does that mean they want a bunch of people? No, that means you're following 500 porn accounts on Twitter for no reason. Why are you doing that? Why are you following 800 women on Instagram and liking their pictures when your girl's right next to you? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing, why are you as a girl watching Chris Brown? No, <laughs> I mean, having a polyamorous mindset when you can't handle even yourself. If you cannot deal with yourself, if you cannot be introspective, if you cannot believe in yourself, if you cannot look deeper in yourself, do you even deserve to be around yourself? Because if you can't handle being around you, why are you looking for someone else to deal with you? Why? You have a polyamorous mindset where you think you can handle multiple things multiple people, multiple jobs, multiple stressors, when you haven't even dealt with the first step, you haven't even gotten up out of bed yet, but you're already thinking about planning the day. You haven't made your bed yet, and yet you're trying to lay in it. Why are you doing that? You get back me that way. It's evil, it's disgusting, and it's yucky. You're having a polyamorous mindset without emotional maturity. That's disgusting. Now then, very important. Do not speak to women like they are women. Do not speak to men like they are men. Speak to them like they're people. Because, very specifically, what am I? When you look at me, what do you see? I always say black, I'm excited, so I'm going to see rocket. I am a human first and everything else second. Everything else second. Whether I'm a nigga next or a black person, doesn't matter to me. I am a human first. We all deserve the same level of entrance when speaking to people. If you see a woman and think to yourself, oh, she has a fat ass, oh. If you see a guy and think to yourself, oh, his muscles are amazing. Look at the person first. Just look at them as a person and understand how would you would like to be approached if you want to approach someone. That's like a, like a Bible concept. Treat others how you want to be treated. That's basic, that's just like a simple thing. I keep seeing people approach people as if they are that set gender. Stop doing that. They take out the human aspect of interaction. They're, go ahead. How do you approach people? Easy. Hi. Hey, we approach each other. That's, it's really that simple. You don't, don't do it with, if you have malicious intent in the interaction, don't. If you have malicious intent in the interaction, don't. Because you are falling in love with an idea of a person as opposed to the actual person. If you see somebody from the distance with a massive badonka donk, or a guy with good teeth and a great job in playing guitar, guess what? You don't know that person. That person could have 16 assault charges. You have no idea what they've done. You have no clue. One time, I was in public in Detroit. I high-fived somebody. That man was on the sex offender registry. I had no clue. I was like, dang. They got to download this app. I didn't know. I just figured it out. That's, I figured out because I was looking on the app at home. You ever just look on your... Go, to your, go home and look at the sex offender registry. Statistically, there's at least two in this room. Yeah, I'm watching you. Yeah, yeah. Statistically, statistically. Yeah, statistically, yeah, I'm watching you. Anyways, that's, that's what I, I, just, I just went on the app, that's just what I did. Now then, let's role play. Who's ready to role play? <laughs> Wonderful, you love to see it, I'm so happy. So, by a show of hands, who's ready? All right, you come up, you come up, you come up, uh, you come up, come on, you come up, just uh, come up on stage right quick. All right, uh, you come up, the, you're, that's a, no, not you, you, you. You can go one year there. And I'll get you in the back of the Tony Tony Chopper hat. That's all I need. Come on here. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, it's nothing crazy. I'm just going to figure something out about speech. What are you passionate about? Uh. Ah. What are you passionate about? What are you passionate about? Basketball. Tell me about it. I'm a coach, I love it. Uh, I love to train. Messed up. What are you passionate about? NASCAR, Dungeons and Dragons, pro wrestling, martial arts, stunt work, uh, podcast. Messed up. <laughs> Tell me something you're passionate about. Money. <laughs> what are you passionate about, money? I love shopping, I love spending. Money, just spending it, it's good, it's good, dopamine, all that. Good answer. What are you passionate about? Play my saxophone, my instruments, me being a musician. Beautiful. Direct answer. What are you passionate about? 
Um, food. Stop right there. No! Everybody go sit back down. Everybody go sit back down. <laughs> now let me explain what the purpose of that was. I, um, uh, I like, um, I, um, I like, um, that right there. That is what I want to weed out. The stopping phrases, the thinking. I need you to say every single Mike Tyson in a phone booth fighting Hannah Montana in the middle of the desert, and they're going for 15 rounds. I need you to say every thought that comes across your mind. I need you to speak without consequence. I need you to speak your soul into the world. I need the world to understand what you are. Don't just think it. Don't just keep it locked up inside of your body. Because when you manifest something, when you believe in yourself, when you sell yourself in the mirror, I'm going to make it today. I don't care what anybody says, I'm going to make it today. I'm going to be great. I'm going to be great. You need to do that. Because you need to convince yourself as well. You can think it and say, no, don't mumble it. Say it. Put it into the world. The universe will deliver. It will disorder even. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. That is what I need from you. To be more. Because a lot of people are so concerned about what I think. Don't worry about what I think. You don't know me. You don't know the person that you're approaching either. You just know that if you get... Yes, sir. Okay. Well, we're going to work on changing your mind throughout the panel. We're going to work on it. We're going to work on that. We're going to definitely work on that. We're going to definitely work on that one. Did you? you need this one. My goal is to weed out the unnecessary fluff of everything. I love small talk. I really do. I love worthless conversation. Because it tells me what you care about. Worthless things. It's like if somebody said to you, hey, we're gonna pay you the minimum wage. That means you leave that job. Because that's the minimum they're gonna pay you. That's the minimum that's allowed to pay you. If someone's gonna pay you minimum wage, leave the job. They're not worried about if you want more than that. Because minimum wage means the bare minimum. And if you're looking for the bare minimum in a partner or a person or a friend, they're not worth it. Now then, carry a camera, right? And this is a great tactic. Obviously, if you carry a camera, you can just get all their information because you're a photographer. You can carry the camera. This is a, you can just skip all the conversation. You can just carry a camera. Who's with me? Good. That's a manipulation tactic. <laughs> Let's talk about manipulation. You do not have to manipulate someone into liking you. I am a freaking weirdo. I'm strange. I'm odd. People are, people are, good, thank you, thank you, thank you. People are off put by my opposition and my position all the time. People think I'm a strange guy. I'm short. I'm too energetic. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Why do I go to the bar? Simply be friends. Because I can't do anywhere else. Because I'm an adult. And that sucks. And I can't go anywhere. Library, you can't even talk. I do that. And I talk a lot. That's what I do. I am authentically myself all the time. And that attracts people to me. Because I am not allowing people to stop me. You must be yourself even when you can't. If you cannot do it, do it. That is the main premise of what I'm trying to get you to understand. The RPG bonus of clothing does not exist. I was at the club and I saw this guy. He was an Arabic man and he had a nice watch. He had a tuxedo and he looked very well off. He was broke. <laughs> he was disgustingly broke actually. As a matter of fact, I saw him crying in the bathroom because nobody was talking to him or asking about his watch because no one cares. When you're in public and you are anxious that people are thinking about you or talking mess about you or paranoid mindset inside your head that everybody's plotting to get you, no one cares. Most people are very hell-bent on focusing on themselves. They want to get to their next destination and they're barely looking at people as more of a passing glance. That's most people. Most people are more concerned about meeting up with their friends at the convention or going to their hotel room or getting home safe so they don't get into a car crash. That's most people, I promise you, they don't care that deeply. But if you think they care and you put on special clothing so they do care and you think wearing a silly hat will make them notice you or if you think wearing special boots will make you go up in life, you are relying on an RPG boning, a bonus of clothing, a passive bonus that doesn't exist. It doesn't. The passive bonus isn't real. You can wear the world's most beautiful dress for yourself. You can wear the tuxedo for yourself. If you do it for yourself, there's a higher chance you'll be more confident because you chose that. 
You look like you dressed yourself. Thank you, I did. I sure did, thanks. Most people say that as an insult, but I've learned to take it as a compliment because I do not stylize at all. I don't. My sense of fashion is horrible. It is abysmal and it is worthless, and I love it. Now, how to approach this is what you came here for. You don't. Yes, I am so serious. I need to get this point across right now. This panel, in its entirety, is to tell you that at this convention, don't do it. Please. I am so serious. How do you pick up baddies? You don't approach them. Look at them leaving. Cowards. You love to see them. Like, shame them. Yeah, look at those cowards leaving. Yeah, yeah. Well, I came here to pick up baddies. Yeah, yeah. Cowards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's counterintuitive, but hear me out. Let me explain why. I'm going to explain why you don't approach them. If you give off your natural energy, if you are naturally yourself, people have come up to me that I didn't even want to come up to me. That is what you want. You want people to naturally approach you as opposed to you having to do it. The initiation phase is horrifying, especially at a place where you just want to chill out. It cost me $216 for tickets here. I don't, I don't want to be approached by anybody. I want to enjoy the convention. If I meet somebody sitting down playing Tekken, great. We have a common interest. Now we have a commonality between us. If you approach somebody because they're wearing a cosplay, compliment the cosplay. Say they did find handiwork, be gone, goodbye, good vibes, good day. That is what you must do. You don't approach to approach. It seems counterintuitive, but it works. Because that's how I've met most people. That's how I've gotten a lot of my friends. I've just been chilling out, dancing, rocking, vibing, and having a great time. And someone comes to me and says, hey man, I like your moves. Boom, I got a friend. Immediately. If you are just being yourself. If you're having a hot girl summer and you just drinking some Everclear and chasing it with Hennessy like a psychopath, someone's going to approach you and say, hey, do you want some water? You can look at them and be like, oh, water. Yes, I do. Boom. If you're playing guitar on the side of the street because you want to practice guitar and you can't play inside your apartment because your landlord is a piece of garbage, guess what? You're going to play the guitar and people are going to approach you. If you're practicing stand-up, like I used to do in Detroit, I used to go outside and practice stand-up to a crowd of nobody. Guess what? People stopped and listened because I was being myself. I was being what I wanted to be. I was being my most authentic form. If you're not the most authentic form and you're trying to pick up some manipulation tactic and figure out some skewed way to get a friend or a partner or somebody like that, it's not going to work. You are lying to yourself. And if you lie, you've already destroyed the foundation of trust in a friendship and a relationship, and you don't deserve it. Don't approach. Boom. How do I get a partner? Wrong. How do I become somebody worth dating? That is the question you should ask yourself. How do I become somebody worth it? I keep hearing this statement. Oh, I'm a nice guy. That is like going to a movie and saying it has a plot. That's worthless. The second statement, oh, this derogatory part is good. I hear a lot of women say this. My butt is fat. My breasts are big. Congratulations. I don't need those. They're completely worthless in the grand scheme of things because I'm here for a person, not a body part. I am here for a conversation. I am here for you. If you are just Ice Spice, I don't need you. Like, and I'm not dissing Ice Spice, by the way. I don't want to point that out. I'm not dissing Ice Spice. I love Ice Spice's music, but I don't know anything about Ice Spice. I really don't. <laughs> I'm just, I just want to point that out. I just want to point that out. Most people from a pure cognitive, cognitive standpoint see Ice Spice as just butt. That's what most people see. Ice Spice is much more than that, obviously, but most people just see that because they're falling in love with the idea of what they think she is, which is gross. Don't do that. You don't get to say those statements, by the way. If you say you're a nice person, you don't get to say that. Other people can say that about you, but you don't get to say that. If, you, if I'm telling everybody, oh, I'm so nice, I'm, I'm so nice, that's stupid. No one cares. If I'm, someone says I'm nice, that matters because that's an opinion of me. That's, that's peer review critique. When you submit a paper or a document, you get a peer review critique. You can't just do all the research yourself with nobody interjecting and think to yourself, this is perfect. That's goofy. This pussy is good. Is it? <laughs> Has it been peer reviewed? What? 
show, show me your LinkedIn. I want to see the review. I want to see your Yelp page for this pussy. What is the? Is it really good? I need to see the. I don't care because it doesn't matter. Because every every pussy on the planet is good if you're with somebody you care about. Every dick on the planet is good if you care with somebody you care about. It, it really is. All of them are great. If you're with somebody you love, you can work with them because you grow with that partner. You learn to love what they are. You learn to love what is about them that makes them amazing. That is what the aspect of it is. You don't get to say that. Other people get to say that about you. That is how it operates. Boom. Also, being nice doesn't mean anything. I put this long thing here because I need to remember my main points. But I'm not going to read all that because that's too much good words. Being nice is different than being kind. Being nice is, oh, you're not fat. Being kind is, let's go to the gym. That, that's, that's being kind. There's a, big, there's a huge difference between those two. There's a vast difference between those two things. Because I've, I've been told that nice guys finish last. They certainly do. They certainly do. Kind people, though, everybody wants to be around somebody that's kind. Everybody wants to play with somebody that plays Mercy and Overwatch. Everybody wants that. Everybody wants the support role of the healer. Like, oh, we got enough tanks. We got enough DPS. Do we get a healer? Do we get a support class? Because they're kind. They take care of things. They take care of people. They take care of themselves. Being nice doesn't do anything for anyone. Being kind does. If you're sick and you say, oh, I need help. And someone says, I hope you get better. And another person says, I'll get you some Benadryl. Boom, they're kind. That's great. They did something. Kind is the initiative action of doing something. That's the important part of it. So, there goes that. Now, people are not vending machines. Let me explain what this means. You cannot put kindness tokens into somebody and get pussy as a reward. You can't do that. It doesn't work that way. You can't just say, well, I bought you this dinner, and I got you this car, and I got you this dress, and I, no! It doesn't, that doesn't how it works. And women, if you took care of me at my lowest point, I still don't owe you anything. Yes, that sucks to hear, and it's horrible, but I still don't, you don't owe anybody anything ever. Yes, you took care of me when I was homeless and destitute, and you helped me get a job. I don't like you, though. That's, that's the grand crux of it. That's the entire thing. Well, you left me for someone else. I left you first, though. I didn't cheat. I left. It's a big part of that. Most people will cheat. That's a horrible thing to do. Never cheat. Now, this is very important. If a girl says, or if anyone says this, that says, I really like guys who play piano, and, they, and you don't play piano, and you get mad that they don't date you, or I like girls who like anime, and the girl doesn't like anime, and you don't like anime, and you're a girl, and you say to yourself, man, I don't know why he doesn't date me. That's because no one really cares about that. People value aesthetic more than most things, and that's okay, because everybody has a preference, obviously. Obviously, everybody has a preference. A lot of people won't date me, because I'm 5'5". Five five. That's fine by me. I'll find somebody that wants to date me that likes 5'5 five five guys. That's super simple. A lot of people only want to date people six feet. That's okay, too. You're allowed to have a preference. It's okay. Because healthy does not equal attractive. You can have all these great traits about you. I have a car, I have a job, I'm emotionally mature. Most people don't care. They can't tell that off a of first initial meeting. They'll have to learn that if they get to know you. Most people don't care, and that's okay. That is perfectly fine. Because most people are like that. They value an aesthetic. I need a thick, goth mommy. You know what I mean? Like, like, oh yeah, you need that? Sure, that's the whole aesthetic. You're valuing an aesthetic. I need, a, I need a tall, light-skinned man with a job and a, and a good hairline. Cool! That's an aesthetic. You value an aesthetic more than a person, and that's fine. And throughout that, you may actually find somebody that meets your criteria of emotional maturity, but you're initially coming at this from a standpoint of aesthetic. That's where you mess up at. You shouldn't go for an aesthetic, even if you have a preference, because your favorite person, the person you're your dream guy, might be the person that you will never even approach. Never even think about, never even look at, never even go in that same direction. Your dream guy, maybe that, your dream woman, maybe somebody that's completely dex just opposed to you. And that's okay, you may never discover that. You can keep throwing darts and shit at the wall all the time and hoping it will stick one day. And that's good too, because that's real. And if you want to keep doing that to yourself and not grow as a person and make yourself uncomfortable, because I said you have to be uncomfortable to grow, you have to make yourself comfortable. You have to find a way to be comfortable in that uncomfortableness. If you are burning alive and you have 
shoes at home that let you walk on lava and you're in lava burning and you left those shoes at home, you have chosen to be uncomfortable. You could have brought those shoes with you. You didn't prepare well enough. What's wrong with you? Always prepare for things of that nature. Now, this is very important. I treat her or I treat him right. If you think that your treatment of someone is more important than their personal preference, then you are not looking for a partner. You want a slave. Understand that. If you think that you treating them good is worth more than what they value, you don't want a, you don't want a partner. You want somebody that you want to treat well and they give you things for it. That's not how the real world works at all. You can't put tokens into somebody and expect greatness out of it. You can't put kindness tokens into somebody and expect, oh, they're going to love me because of it. You can give somebody $1,000 and they can say, thanks, and walk away. Boom. Sucks, don't it? Nobody owes you a thing on this planet, and they never will. You have to live that way because the world doesn't care about you, so you have to care about yourself. Now then, this is the fun part. Anger and patience. So, over the past two months, I have received 700 messages from people on Twitter. People on my Discord, people on Instagram, people on my TikTok. It's been really fun. And I have approached this, and I've done, I do this every year. I do this every year. I, I you know, broadcast myself, and I let people see what I look like, and this is very fun, because I can do this part of the panel. Now, this is patience, not anger. This is not where I'll address the hate and stuff like that right quick. That's me. I made this post, as you guys can see. That's me. That's right, that's my hair. Behind these uh, things, I, I did my hair so nobody recognized me before the panel. So this is what I usually look like at all times. You probably saw this floating around on Twitter. Good. Most people said, I hope somebody beats my ass. Let's see, uh, why his head look like, like, like that good fiend? And I'm trying to look like anime villain. I thank them, I am like trying to look anime villain. I appreciate that. I might go to this little event and beat his ass. Very, I have no idea. I said, I, a bit excessive. I think a healthy discussion would be more beneficial. I don't know, I feel like a slap would suffice. Interesting? That's just violent, I feel. If you ever want to talk about this in DreamCon Discord, hopefully I can convince you that to not inflict harm. That would be just fantastic. What's there to discuss, little bro? You out here trolling and grifting. It's not much more to know. Amazing! As you notice, he approached that from an aspect of pure anger, and I was very understanding and tried to talk it out. That's how, you approach, that's how I approach everything. Patience, not anger. Now then, if anyone goes to this, I'm gonna point at your ass and laugh. That guy's supposed to point at you and laugh, so look for him. He might laugh at you after you've been in this panel, so he might laugh, be warned about that. He might laugh at you. You should actually see what the panel is about, man. Nah, because he read the title and didn't read the description. The description of this panel explains what I'm doing, by the way. I want to point that out. The description actively explains what I'm doing. Okay, thank you for sharing your opinion. I hope you choose kindness in the future. That wasn't passive aggressive. I genuinely hope they choose kindness in the future and don't judge things by their simple appearance. That's a big crux of how I operate. I do not judge by appearance base. I judge by how you are on the inside, initially. Now then. Whole thing just insult me, whole thing right there. Let's see, the, the info on the app is on the app. They wouldn't let me do a panel without explaining the panel. A lot of people think that I just somehow put this panel in and they didn't know what this was about. I spoke to the organizers and showed them the panel. I showed them every aspect of it and they let me do it. Now then, uh, it shows their true character. Anybody that insulted me, all 423 people that insulted me, it shows their true character. It shows they chose to be mean and evil and vitriolic in an environment where you're supposed to be accepting and loving and caring because we're all weirdos. When I was growing up, I didn't watch a lot of anime, but I watched kids who did Naruto run through the hallways getting bullied. And those same Naruto kids are hopefully here today around people that are like-minded where they don't have to get ridiculed and bullied. And on Twitter, they chose to do what those bullies did back to me, and back to those kids in middle school, back to those high schoolers, back to all those people. Because I used to bully kids too. I'm not gonna lie to anybody. I was in Detroit and I was a gangbanger. I'm not gonna lie to anybody else. I was, I was, I, I, shout out to the gangbanger in Detroit. Which one? I, Get an applause. I appreciate this. <laughs> Call me off guard. What does this one say? Uh, bro looked like he never even imagined using traffic in his life. Correct. 
My lips were chapped in those pictures on purpose. Oh, they were horrible. My hair was dry and crunchy. I didn't have any oil in my scalp. It was horrible. Because those pictures were from a time in my life where I was homeless, going through life. That picture with Violet Myers when I was doing sex work. It was a lot of stuff in my life that was this bad. But I, I never slept with Violet Myers, by the way. A lot of people think I did. I never did. I, I never did. I just have a picture with her because we did a YouTube video together. I don't want any rumors spread about, about that. We just did a YouTube video together. Anyways, I said, thank you for existing. I'm glad I caught your attention. I do look insanely crusty. That's just facts. I agree with them. And then he said, struggle stash, dry hair, and crusty lips. 100%. Yeah, that's, that's true. He took three separate photos and just like zoomed in. Perfect. That's great. That's, fa that's valid. That's fair. He critiqued my appearance. That's good. That's great. That is constructive criticism. That's peer-reviewed things. Those are things... 100%. I mean, I did have boogers, but you know, I'm not, not going to lie to anybody. I'm not going to hide you. So I said, thank you for insulting my appearance. I hope to see you there. And if you're here, I hope you're here. You chose to have crusty lips, dry hair, and a look mama stash. And that's funny. That made me laugh for like two days. That was hilarious. That was, that's just funny on paper. I can't even, that's just funny. And then I posted a picture with me and my cat in my hair. And I said, yep, I do have all that. You are correct. And I agree because that is patience. That is not greeting things with anger. That's my cat in my hair. She loosely sleeps in my hair, by the way. And then they said I was sexist and misogynistic. By the way, I have not interacted with this person prior. They just saw the title and assumed I was sexist and misogynistic. And I said, oh, I apologize. I feel like there's been some miscommunication. And he said, nah, I didn't miscommunicate anything. So he is choosing not to grow. Don't be this person, please. Do not be that. A lot of people insulting me, bada bing, bada boom, and then you know, saying not be a creep. Interesting. I don't know what I did. I, I just posted the title of the panel. I didn't do anything. Anyways, all these people, all these people insulting me. That's all it is. People insulting me all the way through, and they're just insulting me. Now, why did I show that? Because this is to show the difference between anger and patience. The initial reaction you have upon losing your keys. The initial reaction you have when someone yells at you. Stop greeting the negative energy back with negative energy. What's wrong with you? Don't you know an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind? You're trying to walk around like Stevie Wonder? What you doing? Stevie Wonder? Okay, get out. You flat earther. I know it's just Orlando Brown. <laughs> I know he is. I, I, say, I say this as somebody that has grew up and believed in one proverb that I heard from the Bible. And I'm not very religious at all. If you slap me on the cheek, I will give you my other. That is how I operate as a person. You can destroy me, bash me, break me down, annihilate me, insult my appearance, tear me, just, just completely ruin me. And I will extend my hand to help. That is how I've always been. Because it makes sense to do that. Because this world sucks already. Why would I try my best to make it more difficult? We got bills. Inflation is killing us. Trump might be president. Everything's bad. Everything's bad. I'm so sad about everything. I do not want to make the interactions I have with people that are in the same tax bracket difficult. Please, I don't want to do that. I do not want to direct my anger and vitriol towards people who are the same kind of person I am. I want people to be kinder as people. That is the main crux of why I even made this panel. Because if you're kinder, People will approach you, they will love you, they will want to be around you. People love kind people. When I was younger, I was 10 years old and I just settled into America. For the first time in my life, I read a Superman comic. The Superman comic I read was issue 13. And in that comic, he helped people that were strippers. He helped strippers get money. He didn't even know he was doing bad things. And it was published in, in AC Comics. And it messed me up, I was confused by this. He was just kind. By the end of the comic, he got them jobs. And I was very happy about that. I was like, what? Okay, that's interesting. By the way, stripping is a real job. I was a stripper, by the way. Let's get that back. Anyways, but I love that mindset of, I'm going to help you even if I don't know what's going on. I'm going to help. I'm going to make this existence a bit more bearable. That is what I wanted with these interactions. And the people that did speak to me, they changed their mind. They said they were going to show up and hopefully they're here. People that didn't speak to me and still hate me are going to go on Twitter after I do this and say, how was that panel, y'all? Anybody got the clips? I didn't show up. That's what's going to happen. And I'm happy for that because they will never know what it is that I did. And that's amazing. Now, let's talk about what people thought this was going to be. Alpha, Sigma, Beta, Omega. Anybody know those words? 
Those are the imaginary totem pole of nonsense. This doesn't make any sense to me. I don't like these words. Because these words are used by the people that they thought I was gonna be up here. What are these words? Alpha male, sigma male, beta male, omega male. Stupid, they're, they're stupid, it's, it's ignorant and childish. They've allowed the most loud and most narcissistic people a platform. When you give power to people that are evil, they will use it for evil. And it's beautiful, because if you listen to that, because you don't believe in yourself, you'll be convinced by it. Narcissistic and sociopathic people. People that are scared of themselves often listen to these people. People that don't want to be what they are. People that are scared of who they are because they don't like themselves, so they take the mindset of somebody else. It's kind of like when you're younger and you see somebody that everybody's following, so you follow them too because it's crowd herd mentality. You hate to see it. Look at everybody leaving. You love to see it. <laughs> they want a level of control over your life that they don't have. You need to research and discover who you are. If you are scared of being who you are, if you are scared to explore, you are scared to be uncomfortable. And I need you to get to that state. All right, hygiene is key. This is the important part, right? Yeah, this is, this is, this is the main crux of it. Everybody goes like, oh, he's gonna come in and just toss the other on the thing. Now, this is, this is very important. I have been going to anime conventions for many years. I believe 12 at this point. Every time, I remember I couldn't smell up until last year. I had, a, I had a severe anosmia ever since I was 12. But for some reason, I could feel the musk in the air. Like I was walking, like New Orleans it was. It was crazy. I was like, gee, Willikers, what is going on? I walked into a Smash Bros room and immediately almost fainted by the, just the pure gunk in the, in the air. It felt like, like aspergillus or mold in the air. I was so concerned. I was like, what is going on? I hurt myself thinking about that. It was sad. I was sad to be in that room. It, it's, it's, no, <laughs> you need to shower. That's very important. Showering is very important. Now, if you got B.O., get D.O. This is very important. I need you to take a shower and then after such, after washing with a wash rag, a lather soaked up wash rag or loofah, to put what you made, this item may be foreign to some of you. This <laughs> is it's like the holy grail of what you must use. This is very important. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, some people, may, this may not work. That's fair, this may not work. You may need something stronger. You may need ball deodorant. You may need something deeper than that. You may need to go to a spa and get your cuticles done. Some men are so scared to go to get their manicures done. When the, if you are a man, look under your nails right now and tell me if you have dirt. Look under your nails. Look, I need to see if you have dirt. You can't, I can't tell what you, you can't, you can't tell? If, 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 you are, if you are somebody that knows they're a little bit dirty, scratch your neck and tell me if there's dirt under your nail. I'm so serious. Go ahead, scratch your neck and try it. And look at, look at your nails. You don't have to tell me, but just know if you scratch your neck and there's dirt under your nails, you didn't wash right. You didn't wash, bro. I'm so serious. It's gross. Because that creates a household for bacteria. I'm a human science major. When I see people scratch their neck and there's mold under it, I'm like, oh, God, what? how did you do that? That shouldn't even be, yeah, I'm so serious. I'm so serious. I'm bisexual, right? So I was, I was hanging out with a dude, and he pulled down his trousers one time, and I saw a, a fungal matter I've never seen before. It's like a comedy. I'm so serious. Dirty, disgusting, vitriolic, nasty, take a bath. Self-care is so important. It's so, please, please, 